So hi everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Martin Anza. I'm coming from Uruguay and along with my colleagues, we are representing Saibal. The idea for the next 10 minutes is to share with you who we are, what we have done in the, in the last years, a bit of history of our organization, but also what we are doing today and some specific project that we are running MOOCs in a very specific context of a national education transformation program that we are running in Uruguay. Um, I just stopped in this picture because yesterday I've been discussing with a colleague of mine and she told me, where do you get that picture? Uh, probably from some internet resource or something. It's a very nice picture with children uh, learning from a teacher in the, in the classroom. And this is a classroom in Uruguay and it's not for the picture, it's a standard class and a standard uh, education center all over the country. We have a national program in the country, so this picture happens in every classroom every day, and this is the way that we are uh, teaching and trying to improve the, the learning experience. So, just in case, because not everyone knows, here we are, <laughs> between Argentina and Brazil. We are a very small country, 3.5 million is our population, and between students and teachers from the public sector, we are between 800,000 and 900,000, okay? And we have some part of the private sector that is joining us. We are very open to, to receive them. Um, what do we offer in Seibal? Uh, Seibal is a, a center for digital uh, technologies uh, that, as I mentioned, is working with the public uh, with the public policies at national level in Uruguay. Uh, we offer a bunch of services uh, as uh, technologies for education, educational platform, uh, uh, programs as well, some strategic information. On the top of that, we have that uh, Fundación Seibal. It's a foundation that is meant to approach and work with some research at international level and extend communication and bridge with some other organizations uh, all around the world. Some numbers. As I mentioned, we born 16 years ago. We start as a one laptop per child program and we have been evolving uh, over the years. Now, um, we already develop uh, devices for all of our beneficiaries, students and teachers. We have a 100% coverage. That means at national level, there's no every, any student or teacher without a device or a laptop or a, or a tablet to, to study. We reach uh, internet connectivity in the first years and now we are 98.8% of the students having internet connectivity for free again. And we are looking for that 1.2% that we are missing, for sure. We are going to make it. Um, for the centers that we have the opportunity to, to have some high-speed internet connectivity, we put on top of that um, video conferencing. We are teaching English as well as coding, and we are looking for some new programs to, to develop on top of that. Um, plus 10 education uh, platforms and plus 11 educational programs. And that other picture that I would like to share with you, this is AI we were playing, uh, preparing the, the presentation. This is uh, something from, from the AR world. And this is trying to represent how we work. Uh, it's a healthy, we put a healthy balance between educators and engineers. We are uh, over 500 people in Seibal. Uh, and this is the kind of conversation that we have every day. We are trying to understand between engineers and, and, and teachers. But I think despite of the challenge, this is one of the key aspects of the, of the success of the program. So, Karina? Yes. There you go. Thank you. Well, I stay here a little bit. Um, yes, we are an innovation lab, technology and pedagogy innovation lab for the whole educational system in Uruguay. So we are a government organization. And one thing we, we wanted to show you is we overcame already one of our fundamental barriers to the tech uh, barrier access. But that's not enough as our keynote sp speaker today said. So technology alone doesn't, doesn't work. We need much more. So that's why we invested so much in many educational programs. Particularly, we have been working with one already for 10 years. 
and which is a program that is part of a global community, new, um, new pedagogies uh, for deep learning, and maybe you heard of, uh, founded by Michael Fullan, which aims to transform teachers into activators of, leading, um, of learning experiences based on competences, and particularly we, we promote six competences, six C they are called, communication, collaboration, creativity, character, citizenship, and critical thinking. But all those programs that we drive, they are optional for our teachers. So we are not the ones responsible to, um, to give formal uh, trainings to our teachers. <coughs> in Uruguay, there are three main actors in the education, the Ministry, um, uh, um, the Ministry of Education and Culture, the University of the Republic, and also there is a third actor, which is the National Public Education Administration, and that's the most powerful, in fact, which is the one in charge of all the educational policies and also of the formal uh, training of our teachers and the administration of the, of the education. So they decided last year to embark on something which we we have been promoting for the last 10 years. So move a traditional curricula from a disciplines model into a competence-based model. And that's why we have now a new national curriculum framework, which is based on those 10 competences that we see there. I'm very happy to see computational thinking there. <laughs> I drop for that one a lot because I'm a computing engineer and also because it's something that is at the ADN of CEUA. But the thing is that they now they have to implement this curricula, this change, and teachers have to uh, make the change from the disciplines model to the competences model. And they say, well, we need to teach the teachers very fast. This uh, happened last year. And in May, they asked us to uh, train teachers at the scale very fast. And we had to have our first massive course online by October end of year, we made a decision and we chose OpenEDX. And we already have uh, three uh, online courses, uh, massive online courses. We have a pilot of 40 online courses, five of them uh, for the national uh, curricular transformation. But we started with uh, the hard way, <laughs> with more than 60,000 registered teachers and more than 50 46, sorry, uh, already started the first um, massive course, more than 33,000 already approved. We like those ways, but they are challenging, and we are learning a lot. And we couldn't have done this if it was not because of OpenEDX. We have many platforms, but we didn't have any platform that could do this so fast and at a scale, at this massive scale. So, <coughs> We want to do this not only for the National Education Public Administration, but also because CEIVAL, as an innovation lab, is in charge of dealing with challenges. And we see a challenge in Uruguay and in LATAM, which is the teacher's training. That's a, a hallmark in LATAM. And mainly what happens is that there is no teacher's a professional development strategy in many countries. And when there is one, it is very focused on uh, the, the developing content, so content development for the disciplines instead of learning by doing. And something that we also uh, heard of in our keynote speaker today is like, today there is evidence, scientific evidence, that the, the best way of learning is learning by doing. So we want to have a strategy for them that address that. Also we want to address the global challenges that are many for the teachers. But <coughs> we have proposed this one, well, it says, <laughs> it's hidden, but it says strategy. So we, ha we want to have a teacher's professional development strategy, strategy that ranges from an ad scale proposal to very personalized uh, offline and online trainings, profiting everything, all the programs that we have done already for the teachers, but nailing them all together in a strategy and also making it available, particularly the massive courses online in OpenEDX. But also, we are a data-driven organization based on results. So we have been uh, collecting data 
across all our platforms in OpenEDX2, but we love to do <coughs> statistical experiments, data analysis, and also <coughs> infer through data. And we can do that because of our healthy index of engineer educators, and that's what we want to bring today to the OpenEDX community, our experience, and also together with our partner, UTEC, uh, try to build our national community in OpenEDX, and that's why we are here. I wanted to share this with you all. Thank you. That's all.